If you want to become a better painter, one of the best things you can do is educate yourself a little bit more on painting, which is why in this video right here, we're going to go over the anatomy of a paintbrush. That's right. Professor Wild is in the house. I'm going to teach you what every part is called on a paintbrush and what it's used for. So that way you have a better understanding that you can apply to your paintings. I feel like I need to be a little more sophisticated for this because Professor Wild is here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, here we go. Oh, yes, yes, glasses. Glasses will do it. Like seriously, what is it about glasses that makes you look a little more sophisticated and like you have a greater knowledge of everything? Paints brush. Hmm. All right, let's lose the glasses because these are made for reading and kind of hard to see the camera from afar. It's hurting my eyes actually. If this is your first time here and you need help with how to's, tips, tricks, tutorials, and all that fun stuff for your creative adventures, do me a favor and hit that big red subscribe button down below and tick that bell so you know when my videos go live for you. Now, when it comes to talking about paintbrushes, you have to realize there's a lot of different types of paintbrushes out there. And because of that, there's a lot of terms that reference the anatomy of particular paintbrushes out there. But I'm gonna go over the general terms that cover pretty much every paintbrush out there. But you need to know, depending on where you are in the world or what country or region you're in, there might be a slightly different term, but I'm gonna try to go over all of the general ones that will apply to pretty much everybody out there. Let's start with the hairs on the paintbrush, which are more commonly called bristles. When the bristles come to the end point, this is generally called the tip, the point, or the toe. If you paint with a wider brush, like a one inch brush or a two inch brush, this can also sometimes be called a flag end. When you wanna to refer to all the bristles in your paintbrush, this is called the head. Within the head, you also have the belly, which is what holds onto all the pigment and paint that you're applying to your painting surface. Where your bristles meet this metal piece here, this is called the heel. That metal piece we were just talking about, that is called the ferrule. And the ferrule is used to fasten or join or seal or reinforce the bristles to the handle of the paintbrush. Typically at the end of the ferrule, you will see a crimp and the crimp just holds the ferrule to the handle of the paintbrush. After the crimp, you have the handle, which obviously is the part that you hold onto when you're painting. Now within the handle, you have some very important information that most manufacturers will put on there. You'll generally have the company name, which also can have the brand or series of the type of paintbrush that you have, the size of the paintbrush, the style of the paintbrush, and sometimes you'll even see the series and shape number of the paintbrush. Each manufacturer is a little bit different. You may see more information or you may see less or you may see different information entirely. Hopefully Professor Wild was able to help you out on the anatomy of a paintbrush. I just wanna educate you a little bit more so you feel comfortable about your new creative venture that you're diving into. If you want any more videos to help educate you a little bit more on your creative adventures, hey, let me know in the comments down below. And while you visit down there, don't forget to hit subscribe and like this video. If you need any more awesome tips from me, do you new a favor and popping them over here to the right hand side. Make sure you check them out. Wild always here to make you bigger and better with your creative ventures. And as always, keep those brushes wet and of course, peace.